Hey guys, Twisted Maxi here. The last time I posted a Creator World video, it was about kicking all of the EA households out of the template worlds. I also went over the pack requirements tool and left you with a little teaser for some simple lighting tools. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. That was way back on version 0.07. Little did I know that the lighting update would take me months and a lot of repeated comparisons to finally conquer. There were a few major updates in between, but a little over two months worth were purely dedicated to this lighting mode. Opening the game, checking the lights, comparing in Photoshop, adjusting values, opening the game, checking the lights, comparing in Photoshop, adjusting values, ad nauseum. But today I am very excited to show you the result, a dedicated light editing mode that allows world builders to design their own world lighting instead of working around the existing baked EA lighting. First off, before we get started, I want to point out that there was a huge quality of life update back in version 0.08, which added this in-game help menu. It can be brought up by pressing the question mark on your keyboard. You can leave it up regardless of what you're doing in the world builder, and it has the controls for all tools so you'll never be lost or miss out on a feature. Alright, so, Creator World's lighting mode. Anyone who used Creator World up till now has seen these seemingly random circles in the terrain that are lit up. However, if you load EA's world objects into it, it starts to make more sense. So these are lights that are actually baked into the world file and not editable during runtime. The solution to this is to remove all of these lights and create an in-game object that has the equivalent lighting. As of this update, you'll find that your template worlds are extremely dark at night since there's absolutely no lighting by default. You can start from scratch like this, but you certainly don't have to. You can enter the lighting mode by pressing L and you'll see a drop down appear in the top right. If you want to start with EA's lights loaded in for you, just press the load EA world lights button and you'll see white gizmos pop in everywhere EA world light would normally exist. They'll have nearly the same lighting as they would if they're baked, which I'll get into more in a minute. So we've got our default lights, but you can tell some of these lights don't make sense in our new worlds. For example, if we come down into the forested area, there's a few point lights scattered for no reason. The lighting editor uses the same controls as the world builder, so we'll just click to highlight this gizmo and press the delete key. Now, if we have some places where we think lights need added, we can use our lighting catalog to do so. You'll see a standard selection of lights, which I think will cover most needs, but a bunch of other objects were necessary to support the default world lights, so I allow world builders to utilize those too if they should need. Change the drop down and you'll see them all listed and grouped by a couple different values. There's quite a few numbers that dictate how a light looks, but I tried to boil it down to just a few important ones. Core represents the size of the inner light, and then range dictates how wide the outer light cone is. There's also two main types of light, point lights and spotlights. Point lights emit a uniform glow in all directions, while a spotlight emits a cone of light in a specific direction. The world builder rotation controls can be used to control the spotlight direction. I'm aware the gizmos can be a little small when you're working on the scale of an entire world, so this mode comes with a magnify button that makes them comically large and easy to click. You'll also notice that you can see the gizmos when they're behind other objects, and even if they're below the terrain. You can click them still as well, so it's nearly impossible to lose track of them. The lights are only visible when you're in the light editor mode, so they won't bother you while you're trying to edit the rest of the world. You can easily select all light mode items using the select all lights button, and for convenience, you can actually hide the lights without leaving the light editor mode. If a particular light is too intense, just elevate the light farther away from the ground and it will quickly mellow out. Each light can have its color and intensity changed via the color picker. Just shift click the object to open it. There's currently some concerns with the intensity range and the color availability, but those will be addressed soon enough. I think everyone is going to be very pleased with the solution. So there you have it. The mode appears pretty simple on the surface, but it was actually very complex and taxing to work on. Partially because it turns out that the in-game lighting behavior is different from the world lighting behavior. So sometimes I would send myself on a wild goose chase, thinking I'd done something wrong, 
when really it was just that there were too many lights too close to each other, and the in-game lighting was adjusting differently from what the world lighting would have done. This led to much of the trips to Photoshop to compare pixels, attempting to figure out just how off I am from the accurate result. Closer than I thought, as I found out. I'm not joking when I say this ended up being one of the most difficult tasks I have faced with Create World. So much so that I will actually be taking a week off for a mental health break, starting when this video is posted. I have some great stuff lined up for my return though, and like I said, I think you'll like the fix for the collar and dimmer issues. Thanks everyone, and I hope you have a good week. By the way, quick reminder that the VIP tier on my Patreon is still open, which gives any VIP an in-game credits listing for Create World permanently. This will be open until all slots are filled or Create World reaches completion.